this is Frederick from Tech Nordic and this time I'm going to give you a little bit more insight of what we can do with the RSA and the SignalView PC software. So while we're talking here you can see my screen set up but basically I got a few questions about spectrum monitoring and how you can take a snapshot of the environment and compare that to live data and if it's possible both in real time and non real time so the answer is yes you can see that I'm looking here I'm sitting in Europe I'm looking at a 400 megahertz sperm between 750 and 1150 this is how the normal spectrum analyzer would look at this trace um, we can go to uh, trace 2 oh, uh, trace 3 is a peak but it doesn't really matter what I wanted to see is is this one over here so here I did a setup where we do a reference scan in real time. You can see the PY is probably pending because my PC is not that good, but pending between 100 microsecond and up. And at the same time, we do a mask testing. So this setup I do here is a very simple setup, really. So I, I kind of take a snapshot of a trace in P cold real time using one of those traces and save this as a reference. And then I take another one similar setup and I have math. And what I do with the math then is, is I subtract the you know the scanned environment versus the live data. So I'm start doing this which is related to finding new signals coming in. I have a little bit of signal generator here I can show you. I just put it on and it should be very visible. Uh, and of course when you do the setup like this and uh, you have the markers I can go from markers to peak to peak I can go to the next one so you see that you know I have something around 870 megahertz it's, it's a little bit of a signal generator I do so let's now start how do I do this so I clear this one and we can see the trace is a math trace this is the trace, I can show it on and off, and you tra trace my uh, one minus trace two. So if I go to this one and look at the traces, we have trace one, which is peak and hold, fine. We have trace two, which is the recall trace. So if, if I want to do a new kind of uh, reference, I can take this away, show this one, and save trace, and call it peak. That's over. And yes, we want to replace it. When that's done, I can show the recall trace again and press clear. In this case, it means that we have just collected a new 400 megahertz, and of course, I go into preference here and you know maximize the points. So this is really working to getting new signals. On the top here we have the mask search tool. It's good just to see that you have any violation. You can do it you know, very thoroughly or like I did a little bit quick and dirty. But in that other tools on the mask search, you have search in the DPX uh, math, it's outside mask. So if I do that, I edit the limits here and I can select the trace I have, want here. And then I can auto draw. So if I take a margin of 10 meg, auto draw, I mean, it's a very simple tool to be able for you to quickly check. So for here, example, there is a huge signal here. And if we clear this away, uh, we will probably see that it's, it's not there anymore. So this is the basic idea. And this setup here, I found to be very, uh, you know, working when you try to see if there's new transmitter coming in or something. Downside, it's a peak detect based only. Uh, I tried to do some averaging. It's a little bit more complex. But now I would like to do the same settings as we did here around 950 and work with 40 megahertz or below. So we do a preset here. We go to 950 megahertz. 
and we go to the ref and this is the other one thing that is new here as a preamp I'm, I'm running the 500 series so this is basically what we see here and i think this is a good example of what's you know what's in here and for those of you who are new we go for the dpx as well just to see how it works so trace by trace we can see color coded we can see some content in here and it basically works so we're going to concentrate on doing a, a advanced spectrum survey uh, uh, on this one go here click this one the first thing not to confuse everybody i take the bitmap off so i'm starting working with this trace this trace is the normal trace uh, here it's the trace one we can also do what we call averaging so this is what I'm going to use. I'm going to use this averaging and I'm going to save the trace as maybe we can go down uh, preferences a little bit more points I don't think you see any difference you see that on the trace so it's just a bit slower and we go a little bit down in resolution like this uh, which, uh, parameter readout we can see it's a bit 3.3 uh, 3, 2.1 oh, but that's, that's okay so we have the trace here uh, and this is one and we save trace as dpx i just call it dpx so we write so this is the first thing we do and then i just show uh, recall trace and we have the dpx and i select it so now i show this one and then i go for trace number two and i set it up exactly the same thing as i did and i can show that one so we have one trace and what's really interesting now is to see the difference between those traces here i do averaging to see also that this signal is you know getting stronger or weaker and then in the bottom here we go to math trace where we have trace one you know that is you know a reference minus trace two and i show that as well and we go for auto scale so this is what we can see so if the power goes up oh well, we can actually do trace two minus trace one so now it's a little bit stronger and weaker and of course we don't need to see these traces i can go to trace one and i don't need to see them and then i went here to the scale and i put like 30 and maybe 15 something in the middle so now i'm sitting here we're looking at this we can see the changes up and down we probably can tweak this down to 20 db if we long we want want and then we have that 10. so if i move around now my hand in the air you can see things kind of moving because my antenna is right next to me so i push the antenna i, I, I grab the antenna let go I grab and let go so this is the way you can then she changes and what I also did in this one is go for the mask search here um, and I search for the DPX math is outside and I just added the limbers but this time you can have upper and lower now auto draw and I get something maybe 3 DB yeah but we should probably have one meg here so we get something auto draw again okay done so that means that I have a kind of a stable signal and I like this is what I like so done and then we can enable the test and from the actions here you can do whatever you want but this is really it so if i'm moving around now you will see see i uh, can put things in the air so this is the first thing to actually spot thing second thing you can do here for advanced spectrum monitoring is to do a split not only do you look at the changes here and you you highlight them because the highlights was also you know you can have a kind of an indication where it happens next thing you do on, on this one this is the real time but then you want to have a long term also you enable that spectrogram as well so here you go to the settings and you have time and you have a spectrum that so that means you have very 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 long term and you update it once a second so this would be as i call it a very nice way for you to really work on spectral monitoring in terms of losing or gaining uh, uh, signals in the spectrum of interest and lastly of course all these things can be changed you can go in here 
I challenge the amplitude scale if you want to be a little bit, uh, you know, remove some of the effects and put it also, I think it's not, maybe like this. And then you can do the same here, amplitude scale, and you can put this at, at the same. So hopefully this initial video, how you can work with traces and math and use this as an advanced spectrum monitoring is great. Um, so thank you.